one of the biggest flex in Rage Shadow Legends of an endgame player is being able to do content like this with one main champion in the leader slot and all food champions right there in dungeons farming gear while also leveling up your food champions at the same time i've been waiting for a time to finally build one champion that i can do it it's not just this one there are a lot of champions that can do it in Rage Shadow Legends, but i was able to finally make uros the soul cage do this for me in raid so i just wanted to show you my gear my stats and all that this champion is best known for being able to solo the scarab king that's what he's best known for this same build at least but i wanted him to do more on my team i've had him for about two months built mastered and everything but i didn't build him until today because now i think it's time for me to build a champion that can also farm gear at the same time leveling up some food along the way for efficiency reasons not just for a huge flex so this is uros the soul cage um what do you call it now champion guide and I'll show you how I use this champion, the gear sets I used on him. And if you can meet these stats, end game gear that is. By the time you get this champion, you must have already gotten far in the game. So I'll let this run all the way to the end so you can see how the run goes. And then I'll come back to you. If you're new to raid, Urost can be obtained by completing Doom Tower Hard Secret Rooms. I think he's a legendary Void Affinity Champion that can obtain from these Doom Tower Hard Secret Rooms. He's not the first one. I think you have to get other champions before you finally get him. It's a long grind to get him, but it's totally worth it and it's for endgame players. So if you have this champion by now, I'm thinking your gear is good. Except you've not been farming well enough so you, because you need good gear for this champion. So that's where he's obtainable from. You cannot pull this champion from shards. Yes, he's one of the champions that is listed right there. If you go to the portal, you can see his name listed there as a champion. You cannot pull from shards. If I can find it, Uros the Soul Cage right there. So you cannot pull this champion from a void shard. So he's a legendary champion that is obtainable for free and is totally worth farming the secret rooms for. Now, another thing you should know about this champion is... His stats, let's head over right there, his skills, I mean, from my champion portal. Uros the Soul Cage right there. Void Affinity. Good design. He's looking like a beast and tanky and he, for sure he is tanky. I'll first of all talk about his A1 which what is what I use the most concerning my build in battle this is what i use the most in battle sometimes i even turn off the other skills his a1 he places a shield on himself 
which is 10 percent of his max hp this is a champion you want with high max hp so that he can put a good shield on himself this is what makes him able to hit the scarab boss again and again and doesn't you know get punished for it even if he gets punished for it there's no problem the value of the shield increases by one percent of for each um, poison debuff on the target so he can put a good shield on him so that means these masteries that maybe improve his shield should be used on this champion on the a2 this is what is kind of special about him i'm talking about the passive vs but this is special because if you're going to be doing dungeon content like i did for wave content you know those waves they can hit really hard no matter how much hp you have they can maybe take you down so who just make sure that he can stun them put slow speed on them and even um yeah stun and slow speed are the two debuffs even decreased stun meter is also the first one so depending on how many poisons they have on them one poison decreased stun meter two poisons or two debuffs as a whole decreased speed and then if they have three debuffs on them they will be stunned 100 percent it will happen so or, or a 75 percent chance when he booked it is a hundred percent chance it will happen i have mine booked already is yes he's worth the books you don't need the books to make him work in scarab and in, but i wanted 100 percent stun for those waves if ryan the conjurer is on the team special abilities happen so this champion is tanky enough to stun an entire enemy uh, wave it's not just for pve content for pvp now if they do have debuffs on them he can actually stun them this is a champion you put in those your tanky troll teams with um, um osoga the war caller you know other champions that are so tanky to kill and make your enemies give up the battle and give up the fight and just walk away from it and just forfeit so bounty he has a strength in right there people think because he has a strength like this it's viable for clan boss yes but the truth is before by the time you get this champion your clan boss team is already set i'm talking about ultra nightmare nightmare you're already beating it so you might not need this champion to do this strengthening um, and ally protection in clan boss but this is a, a, a skill that is most used in the clan boss it's also useful in general content if he does have strengthening on your allies though the enemies that hit your allies will be provoked so that's it's not just a strengthen this strengthen has a little bit of a synergy with the passive so now let's talk about his passive is a long read so i'm not going to read everything i'm just going to summarize it for you basically the gist is he places a 50 percent or a five percent chance a five percent poison 50 percent chance of placing that poison this can be booked up to a 75 percent chance of placing poison on your enemies that hit you so as long as that enemy has a chance of placing the buff on them by attacker for two turns, yes, when they hit you, there's a seventy-five percent chance of placing poison on themselves. So it's not two poisons; it's one poison, and he's not the only champion in the in raid that has this skill. I think uh, what's his name now? Toragi the Frog from Shadow King Faction has a similar thing going for him, which makes Toragi also viable for this same position, I guess. When attacked, has a 50% chance of placing 5% poison debuff for two turns. Of course, once per hit. So, one, two, three, you can get three poisons on them. But what I noticed about Urost is, even if he doesn't say or cause once per hit, there are some enemies, when they hit Urost, he places three poisons on them. There is some waves in the dragon. You can even see him placing four poisons on them in one skill that they take. I'm like, it doesn't say it in one hit, right? But it happens like if they hit him multiple times, they will get multiple poisons. When attacked, has a 50% chance of placing poison debuff on the attacker for two turns. It doesn't say anything about how many hits, but it sometimes places three, four poisons on the enemies, depending on how many times they hit or what skill they use on him. All right like i talked about the strengthen and the provoke he places now the cool part that makes this champion special that makes him unable to get killed in battle can it can solo is this part of this passive that says his hp his max hp will be increased by five percent whenever an enemy receives damage from poison so whenever an enemy in the battle five percent poison his hp adds by his hp increases by five percent whenever they take a hit five percent so at the end it goes up to a 50% max so his HP can be increased by additional 50% so if you bring Uros to battle with 100k HP by the end of the battle he's at 150k HP that makes him impossible to kill that's why why this champion is a little bit special so 
with that hp comes along with healing he doesn't do the healing by himself but you need artifacts in your set that can do some healing because you can't just have high xp and expect to survive you need to heal and when you heal by five percent of your max hp that's a huge heal right there for you so that's what makes him special right now i'll show you his masteries before i go to the artifacts are used on him because masteries a lot of people if you're going to be using him for the dragon for fire knight for i mean <laughs> Ice Golem, soloing those dungeon content, you might want to go to the offense tree and select War Master. But I wanted this champion to be more tanky than, you know, I didn't want to put a lot of accuracy on him. I wanted more HP on him. That's why I went towards this support tree to add this 50 accuracy for me. Now, if you're lacking on resistance instead, you might want to come over here and get 50 resistance, depending on what you need. So, I didn't. If you want a faster run, you know, this War Master hits the bosses harder. If you want a faster run, I guess this War Master will hit harder than what your poisons are ticking for. So, that will help you do faster runs. But I wanted more consistency and accuracy, more HP. That's what I needed. That's why I went this route. All right. For artifacts, finally, this is what I built him in. This sets that immortal sets or what do you call this um regeneration sets any sets that do healing for this champion is what you need lifesteal is not one of them it's not he doesn't hit many times to get lifesteal or you need war master for that i don't have war master so lifesteal is not the one that i would suggest for you the ones that makes him as long as he takes a turn he will heal himself by percentage of his hp that's what you need immortal and regeneration set those are the two ones you that is recommended now you see me put going into um this set toxic set this is um not compulsory this is what i needed to take down the dragon faster this is what i needed to take down the dragon waves faster but if you're just going to build this champion for scarab king where he's the king where he is best known for you don't need um, this um, toxic set on him. Why I'm saying this is because a lot of players, even endgame players, don't have a good toxic set with them because they maybe be selling them or they've not been using them on champions. They keep you've not been farming the dragon long enough to have good toxic set. That's what I'm saying. So it's kind of scarce to get. It's not the most popular set in the game, and my best toxic set is already in my clan boss ultra nightmare team. So this is just crap that I put together, and I was able to get good stats on it. So if you do not have toxic set, go immortal double immortal triple immortal with speed it, it's fine and then finally you can go towards um maybe even regen set if that's the best one for you whatever you need to get you as closer to 100k hp as possible that's what you need on this champion you must not follow this build all right now that you've seen the set that i use on him um and i've recommended the two other sets that are best for him there is no other one i can think of you can even do broken set there but that will not make you a solo champion right there so what total stats was i trying to get on this champion i was trying to get as closer to 100k as possible hp on this champion this is what makes him so tanky and survive defense is not that so important but i managed to get up to 3k now for the speed this is what is kind of strange about this champion if you build this champion with 100 speed with 20 speed with 30 speed as low speed as you can i mean he already has a base speed of 95 so you can't go lower than that <laughs> But I'm saying 100 speed, 120 speed, 150 speed. This champion will do lower turn runs in the um, Doom Tower. That's how when you see Urost doing six turn runs. Because he doesn't really take turns. They keep hitting him and they keep putting poison on themselves. And the poison keep ticking and they kill themselves. So that's how players are able to do it. But I didn't want to build a flex Uros like that that will be so slow that will just rely on hits 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 and then use the poisons to kill all the enemies i didn't want to rely on such a build i do i don't want to do flex doom tower low turn counts i wanted this champion to be both a scarab killer consistent scarab killer and also be a dragon um solo champion that's the main thing i wanted him for so two rows not just a Uros i built to flex on my clan mates to show them that i finished and doom tower in six tons or no there is no re special rewards for sp finishing doom tower in low turn counts right no so this is not that's why i'm not building such a flex uros right now resistance is important on this champion he does have a resistance aura i forgot to mention that so if you can put him in the leader slot he will boost his resistance by an additional 80 so because of that reason that's why i didn't try to push 
my resistance to 350 or closer to 400. So if you add 80 to this resistance, I'll be chilling about um, 300 and something like over 300 resistance. So that's reasonable, I guess. But if you can hit 400, fine. Accuracy is also important because of that. His um, abilities rely on accuracy to land. But for the toxic set, I don't need accuracy at all to land my poisons. All right, that's this champion's um, artifacts and my total stats on him. Now that I've shown you the dragon run, do I also need to show you Scarab King run? I guess I'll show you one. It works in every stage of the Scarab King. I'm talking about Doom Tower Hard. And I currently have level 50 open, so I guess we could do that run and see how Uros works in that run. Now, for the setups, if you want to set this champion up to do better, I'll recommend you experiment with certain things. What do you experiment with? Let me show you what I'm talking about. His skills. You might want to turn some off, especially the ally protection. If you want him to do only this one in battle, right? Only that stun. He keeps turning the waves, keeps turning the waves. Because I feel like this ally protection will be doing the provoke. Yes, it's nice when he has strengthen on him. But I want the enemies to use their entire skills if you put this provoke on them they'll be only using their a1 but when they use their bigger skills their a2 their a3s he places more poisons on them like i said before so most times i like to turn this skill off entirely and let him not use it in battle because he places provoke on them which makes you take less damage yes but i want them to use their big skills so i take more damage and um, yeah so that's maybe the setup you want to set for round one and round two now for the boss i might want to turn this on depending on no i can't place provoke on the boss so i don't even need it for round three but if you're going to take this champion against the magma dragon maybe you want to turn that on so uros can provoke the magma dragon with that ally protection all right let's take this into battle and see how it performs with nobody else with him oh i didn't turn it on Hopefully it doesn't take too long. I tried it yesterday. It took about um, 8 minutes. But if you have your Uros built faster. My Uros is about 200 speed. If you have him 220, 230. If you can take numerous stones. He can place more poisons with that um, toxic set. But if you have a slow Uros. He will only rely on the passive to place um, poisons on the enemies. So let's see how he's able to do this magic.
All right, that was a seven minutes run. Depending on how many poisons you land on the boss, that will determine whether you can do a four minute run or an eight minute run. But it's hundred percent as you can see, he was in no danger of dying, at least during the boss. You can not necessarily use always using him in solo you can bring in allies along with him to clear those waves faster which took some time so if you clear the waves faster it doesn't matter if they finally die at the boss he will get the job done finally all right this is the reason why you farm this though this this um what do you call this let's go to the forge and see what it's meant for i've always farmed other sets but this set is untouchable immunity for two tons resist plus 40 this set is better than the immunity set you have in the game as a normal base set so that's why most people use urost in the solo capacity to farm that scarab in at least this rotation whenever you see the scarab is one of the best sets you can farm for end game content so big shout out to stew gaming i think that's where i first saw um this scarab solo being done with immunity i mean being done with a toxic set but i also saw other videos where they is being done with dungeon content so i wanted to use him not just for scarab because like i said i have a team that can do this scarab but i wanted him to be for two um, purposes doom tower had and also for dungeon at least dragon solo farming or even the ice golem now fire knight is awesome can this champion be an arena champion also like i said yes i'm not going to do the run but it can throw some champions with a defense team that will look almost impossible to kill for them and they'll most likely back out of it so i'm talking about a team that looks like that has no win condition it doesn't matter <laughs> if they have win condition or not you can put in resist high hp or even high sp and resist if you don't want to be debuffed at least cleanse if in case you think you'll be debuffed and then who is the last person maybe a brogni for some million a tanky team like this most people will not want to fight this team because they know they will be trolled so hard by it so anyways you guys have a good one let me know what you think about this my urost um urost um guide I just wanted to show you how I built him finally for my team and I'll be using him again this carab and the higher levels of dungeon. Alright, if I made any mistakes, always correct me below in the comments. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more Raid Shadow Legends content. Later guys.